remember the, when you were first aware of the concept of time? Now, actually, I, th I think you don't because it was so early in your lifetime. But think about when you were an infant and someone would come up and ask your mom or dad how old you were. You remember how they answered? They answered in months. They would say, oh, four months old. Oh, he's eight months old. He's, he's 22 months old. For a period of your life, you were talked about in terms of number of months. But it didn't continue that way, right? After a while, it would be kind of odd to say, well, he's 653 months old. It switches to years. And what I want to talk with you today about is the idea of time and the implication that it has on leadership and developing our leaders today, tomorrow, and in the future. And we call this Leadership 480. Now, if you think about it, our best commodity, our most important commodity, but the thing that has the most challenge for us is this idea of time. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to get people through development. We're trying to get them through activities that help them become stronger. But the single biggest pushback that we get as leadership and learning professionals is the idea of time. And so we've got to address it in some way. In fact, in many ways, if you think about it, time is the new weather. Uh, we talk about it every day, right? Uh, we're always talking about it. In the words of Mark Twain, if we just convert what he said a little bit, it would be like, well, everybody has an opinion about time, but nobody really has any ability to change it. And time is a fascinating subject for us. You know, it has been captured in movies throughout time as people have tried to go back in time and forward in time. But do you know, it's not just in our culture, but it is actually in scientific papers. Over 50 scientific papers a year are written on time travel and trying to deal with the idea of time travel. So it's a serious topic being looked at by a number of different people. And the fact of the matter is, we're really just trying to control time. We're trying to figure out how we can use time effectively as we make critical decisions around the learning and development offerings that we have for the leaders in our organizations. And time is have really making us feel an impact, both organizationally as well as with leaders. First of all, our work has become radically compressed. There is so much that has to get put into the day. There's so much that we need to do that it is actually making us make decisions about how we use that time. The second thing is that the advent of technology means it is always with us. It is rare that we offer a learning event of some kind with people in a room together where they're not also checking email or looking at their phones. They wake up in the morning, they check their phone to see what's going on for the day. They look at it right before they go to bed at night. It is a huge impact on us, the technology that's out there as well. And yet, people crave impact. Beyond all this, they're still human beings. They still want to know that the work they do is valued, that they're making an impact on the organization, hopefully a positive one, that their leaders appreciate them for what they do. They still want to have that human instinct of having impact on the people around us. And lastly, is that this idea that our leaders are in constant transition. They're moving from job to job, they're moving up in the organization, but they're also just having to transition between a lot of different responsibilities. So these four things are the reality of what we're facing, and it drives us to some behavior that isn't helpful. The first part is it really narrows our focus a great deal. We start to focus only on a few things because we don't have the time to do more. Secondly is we start to focus only on the urgent instead of the important interactions between leaders and the people that work for them are all about where are we on the project, where are we on the timeline, less about development, less about longer term things, things we really have to focus on urgency versus importance. And so what do we do as L&D professionals? What do we do as people who are, who are trainers and are making these decisions? Well, there are some things that are easy to turn to that aren't necessarily that effective. The first is we rely on the old faithful we go to the same people over and over again, the ones who already know how to do the work, don't require any training, instead of investing in others to grow them up and help them become stronger. The idea of if you build it, they will come. What we try to do is we just put out a library of information for them to choose from. And then we allow them to pick and choose. And while that might be a part of an effective strategy, it is not a strategy for learning on its own. Sink or swim, the idea that we just throw them into the job and they'll learn it on their own. 
And if they don't learn it, well, they're probably not the right person for that role or that job. We're guilty of that sometimes as we make decisions that are going out. How uh, one and done. We bring people in for one event, a one-time thing. We get, it's a very positive event, maybe very strong. They learn a lot. But once they've completed that, that also completes the development effort, and off they go uh, back onto the job. And then lastly, my favorite, can we do it in two hours? So those of us at DDI, the clients I work with, we'll go forward with a really great solution. We'll offer up some development activity that's really good, and we will hear back. I love it. That is absolutely terrific. Could you do it in two hours? And my only response to that is, actually, I have a pill you can take. And it'll just magically change you in that way. But it's a real issue, right? We're trying to do more with less in less time. Well, we cannot live with these kinds of things. We cannot live with the implications of trying to save time. Because the reality of it is, is that it is not about making everything fit in less time or waiting until a better time. Because it just won't happen. It's really about making a meaningful investment in the time we have. And so I'd like to introduce to you what we call at DDI Leadership 480. And I want to orient you to a new way of considering and looking at time. So the first part of Leadership 480 is looking at 480 minutes, or the typical day in the life of a leader, right? An eight-hour workday, 480 minutes. This is where we make or break the success of the people around us. A coaching conversation in the hallway can either be positive and helpful to a person or can be negative and set that person back for the entire day. How we effectively lead meetings or interact with other people. How we get work done. This specific time frame, 480 minutes, is important, but it's not the only time frame. The second time frame is 480 days, or about two years of working days. And that really is the horizon for many of the business challenges that we face. We decide we're going to have a new strategic imperative. We want to become more innovative. We want to do some process improvement or do things in a different way to serve our customers or our clients. It lasts over a period of time, and it takes a specific set of skills for people to have in order to meet that time frame. Yet there is a third time frame of 480, and that's 480 months, or the career of a leader. And this really talks about how are you set up to utilize leaders at every aspect within every time frame of the career that they have? Do you have people ready to be promoted up into positions of responsibility, whether it's from a frontline leader to a first-line supervisor, supervisor to middle manager, and getting people ready to be senior executives? How are you doing at assessing and developing people over this horizon of the lifetime of a business and the lifetime of a person's career as they go forward. So three different time horizons all linked into this magic number of 480. And if we look at the framework for this, we'll see that each of these is important. You can't just pick one and not deal with the other two. When we look at the 480 minutes or the day, we call those the core skills, and that's really developing leaders in the essential skills they need to have for the critical moments every day. And you have to ask yourself the question, do we know the core skills required for success at each level of leader? Have we somehow analyzed or put together what we at DDI would call a success profile so that they know what to be developed in? We know the critical skills that they have to have. As we look at 480 days or that two-year time frame, a real challenge for leaders, are we preparing leaders to drive business plans and priorities over two years? For some of you, a little less than two years, for some more than two years, but in that time horizon. And the reality of it is, is we ask ourselves, do we align our leadership programs with business challenges and strategic and cultural goals? Are we linking strongly enough to the business and to what we do? And the third time horizon around a career is accelerating and advancing leaders for the next level and for future roles that they might have as they move up. And the question we have here is, do you have a clear and objective process both for assessing who should be a leader, and then accelerating their careers as they go forward. And if we can do these things, then we can begin to imagine a better future. A future where people are engaged with the head and heart, their teams are more focused and more productive, customers are happier, under challenge, stronger alignment with a sense of purpose. We can drive change and transformation. We have faster innovation that we would do. And lastly, leadership becomes a career, not just the next step. People stay with you. We've improved retention because they see a pathway going forward. 
and we can build strong leadership bench strength so we're always ready to open up and go in. Well, why do we do Leadership 480? Because time is our most precious resource and we have to deal with it. And so how do we make the most of that? What are some things we can do to ensure that we're using these 480 timeframes to the best that they can do? Here's four points to consider. The first is around delivering with intent. Delivering with intent. And four things to think about. First is plan for each of the time horizons. I mentioned before, you can't just pick one. You have to have a plan for each of those different horizons. Secondly, be clear what you're developing. Do you have a profile of what success looks like in each of those different stages of a career that's out there? Thirdly is assess to personalize development. Assessment is not separate from development. Assessment is a part of development and should be integrated into that because people want to have their own needs taken into consideration as development plans are being put together. And then lastly, don't leave development to chance or to personal curiosity. And if we just put a library of things out there for, for them to choose from, do we really know that they will make the right decisions and choose the best approach so that their intent, is, so that your intent is achieved? So develop with intent. Second thing is rethink your build strategy. So you know from time in memoriam that you're trying to decide, well, what do we build in-house? What do we go to an outside uh, vendor for, like a DDI, like the organization that I'm with? Here's some things to think about that are different than it was in the past. The first is think about proven practice versus best practice. Proven practice is you're doing the same things over and over again because they proved right historically. Best practice is you're considering the current world that's out there, and a lot of organizations look outside of themselves to really understand what's new, what's different. There are technology implications. We know that the classroom isn't the only way of learning. You all know this already, but there are so many technological pieces that can go in. You need to start thinking about how we can use that technology. The speed to implementation. Uh, is really fast now. It goes from having an idea or sensing a need all the way to I've got to fulfill that need and I've got to get it done. The speed is quicker. So sometimes you just need to buy something and then work on context or contextualization into your organization versus the length of time it takes to build. And then lastly, frequency of revisions or iterations that need to happen. It used to be we would put programs together for our clients and they would then last three to five years we are now working with clients where the program is changed each time we deliver it within just a period of months. We're making iterations to it to keep it current, to add more context. So rethink your build strategy. Point number three is to invest in what we call multiplier skills. What are skills that if you invest in, they can use over and over again and multiply across these three time horizons? We see three different multiplier skills that we think are important. The first is what we call interaction essentials. So the ability to facilitate high quality interactions through a, many different mediums and with a diverse range of people. You are gonna have so many conversations and discussions as a leader, both formal and informal, written and verbal, in meeting settings and others. You have got to become a master at having those interactions if you're going to be effective across the three time horizons. The second one is around business judgment. People have to be able to make good, solid business decisions in the context of the culture of your organization and with the business strategies, the strategic priorities that your senior team has articulated to go forward with. Business strategies, business knowledge within the context of the organization. And the last one is personal mastery, helping people understand themselves and what's going on inside them that either helps or holds them back from being successful. Things like, how do I leverage my own abilities? How do I use my personality and motivation in a positive way so that I can be effective? And then how do I maximize my personal impact and effectiveness as we go forward? An example of one of these multiplier skills would be empathy. In our research and assessment centers, and you've probably seen this research as well, empathy becomes a core skill for effectiveness as a leader. The reality of it is, is 40% or less are actually proficient in it. We can make a big impact by looking at things like empathy and making it stronger. And point number four is bring learning into the moment of need. We've always heard of just-in-time training. But we've got to be able to bring this right into the moment of need. You know, it's like the GPS system you have on your phone that uh, takes you from point A to point B. You don't need to print on a map ahead of time and then figure out where you want to go. You go to your phone, you start driving, and then it tells you when you need to make a turn and gets you to your final location. That's how we're heading 
from a learning and development standpoint, from a leadership development standpoint, is we need to put things right in front of people when they need them. And there's new and exciting stuff that's coming on because of that. One of the things, and this is something we're working on, is virtual reality. The people you see here that have headsets on, they're actually coaching a person. So they're actually seeing a person in the headset. It's not just on a video monitor anymore. And they're having a discussion with that person, and they're interacting with them, and that the responses of that person are changing. It's three-dimensional. It's very real life as you look at it. Imagine when we get to the point where you could put on something like this right before you need to go out and have a coaching discussion with somebody to practice what you want to say, putting it right in line with the timing that you have, making sure that they're getting it in the moment when they need it. And why is it so critical? Why are we talking about all these different things? Why have we spent time this, uh, today talking about this? Well, because it's not about making everything fit in less time. That's not possible to do. And it's also not about waiting until it's a better time, because there's never a better time. It is about a meaningful investment of time. And so I hope uh, in this talk today that we've introduced to you, or I've been able to introduce, uh, introduce to you this idea of 480 as the magical number, looking over the three different time horizons, realizing that we have responsibility for providing something and for nurturing people across those three horizons. The idea that there's multiplier skills that we can use to do that. There are technological implications going forward. And what an exciting time it is to be in our line of work. What an exciting time it is to help leaders as they move forward in their careers and as they help your organization to be successful and go forward. I would love a chance to connect with each and every one of you uh, today. Uh, we can do that a couple of different ways. You connect with me on LinkedIn or my email address, johnverdone at ddiworld.com. Love to attend you also to, meet, to attend our uh, DDI uh, LeaderCon 2019. It's in September this year. It'll be down in Orlando, Florida. You can get more information at ddiworld.com slash LeaderCon. So enjoy your day. Have a great, set of, uh, great session. And I uh, look forward to talking to you. And let's make time an ally for us instead of something working against us.